ServiceNow is proud to introduce two new workspaces for vulnerability response, one for vulnerability managers and another for IT remediation workers. The main goals for the vulnerability manager workspace were to give vulnerability managers the ability to view trending information, create custom watch topics, have flexibility in creating tasks, and view previews in watch topics and remediation efforts. For the IT remediation workspace, we wanted to give those workers a landing page, give them a list of actions on particular tasks, the ability to view configuration items and solutions within the task, and have the ability to edit fields within the tasks. Let's take a look at the Vulnerability Manager workspace first. Immediately, you'll notice that on the left, we have a list of different watch topics that are available to us, such as vulnerabilities with exploits available, critical overdue vulnerabilities, etc. We can even create new watch topics. So for example, we'll say this one is named demo and we'll give it a few conditions such as the risk rating is critical and the active is true. Now I can even click the preview button and it will show me the number of records that match this particular condition. So I can click submit to create a new watch topic, but in this case, I'll just cancel out. As we dive into the watch topics, we can see, for example, the vulnerable configuration item information. We can see that there are 16 distinct configuration items in this particular watch topic. We can see the number of internet facing vulnerable items, as well as the vulnerable items by configuration item class. We can see the distinct vulnerabilities in this particular watch topic. We can see that there are 13 different vulnerabilities here and that they all have existing exploits on them. And we can also see the individual vulnerable items in this particular watch topic. Now, if I want to create a new remediation effort, I can do so by clicking on the Create Remediation Effort button and it will automatically pull in name information and descriptions. I can customize those if I'd like, and it will ask me how I want to generate remediation tasks. I can do so by assignment group, assignment group and configuration item, assignment group and vulnerability, or none where I can manually create the remediation tasks later. And I'll show you that in just a bit. Let's look at a remediation effort in progress. In this remediation effort, we can see that there's an overview. It shows me the number of closed vulnerable items over time. It gives me details about the remediation effort, like it is currently active. It shows me who it's owned by and who is on the watch list. It will show me the remediation tasks that are currently in progress, including the status of the remediation target. In this case, they have missed the remediation target as well as the individual vulnerable items in this particular remediation effort. I can even create my own individual remediation task by selecting the vulnerable items from the list and then clicking Create Remediation Task. I can then give it a short description and assign it, and it will manually create a remediation task for me. That was a brief look at the new user experience for vulnerability managers. Next, we'll switch to an IT remediation worker and look at the new user experience for them. This is the IT remediation workspace, and we can immediately see that it has a wealth of information immediately available to us, such as the assigned remediation tasks and preferred solutions on vulnerable items. We can see the list of remediation tasks here, and if we click on one, we can see additional information about this particular remediation task, such as the remediation target and risk rating. We can see the list of preferred solutions and a list of potential solutions if we don't want to use one of the preferred solutions. We also have details as well as any open change requests that are currently active on this remediation task. We also have a list of actions such as mark as false positive, create a change request, split task if we wish to split this work between ourselves and other IT workers, and creating an exception request if, for example, we aren't going to meet a remediation target date. In this case, let's create a new change request. We can set the change type, 
to normal or emergency, we can automatically add the configuration items to the change request. We can set the priority as well as the plan end date. In this case, we'll set it for a week from today. It will automatically pull in a short description, description, justification, and it will automatically attach the preferred solutions to the change request when we click Create Change Request. Now you can see that the change request that we just created has shown up on the list. This was a brief look at the IT remediation workspace that's now part of ServiceNow Vulnerability Response. If you'd like to learn more, please visit us at www.servicenow.com. Thank you.